Jerusalem and the gates were holding the walls of Jerusalem. So that tells me he was not just concerned about the gates but the walls were also broken. And if, the, if a city in the ancient days did not have a wall, then it showed that that city did not have any security. It meant that that city could be possessed by anyone. So the destiny of Jerusalem was at stake at this particular moment. And so he was concerned because the gates and the walls had gone down. But this is what the man did. Let's look at four. So it was when I heard these words that I sat down and wept and mourned for many days. I was fasting and praying before the God of heaven. Nehemiah was in a place he was comfortable. He was serving the king. But there was a connection between him and the people of Jerusalem. He knew that by blood he was a Jew. Today we might be in this nation. Maybe the, the virus has not escalated to some levels. But we cannot be comfortable when our brothers and sisters globally are suffering. Are we together? And so we must take the place that Jeremiah took. I mean Nehemiah took. So the first thing is that he entered into a dimension of prayer. Which was so passionate. Because he was not just declaring. He was weeping and mourning. Meaning that the news was so devastating. That he could not hold the reality. And this is how the man prayed. And I want us to take the template. And I said, I pray, Lord God of heaven, O oh great and awesome God. So he begins by acknowledging that there is a good God. The fact that the children of Israel were going through judgment, the God of heaven was awesome. You will keep your covenant and mercy with those who love you and observe your commandments. So there is a condition. This God keeps his covenant and mercy to them that obey him. So he was coming to a place of accepting that we have not obeyed you. And that is why your covenant and your mercies don't look like they're manifesting at this hour. Let's look at six. Please let your ear be attentive and your eyes open that you may hear the prayer of your servant. Which I pray before you now, day and night, for the children of Israel, your servant. And confess the sins of the children of Israel, which we, the word there is we, not they. But we have sinned against you. Both my father's house and I have sinned. This is how we need to make this prayer. It's called the repentance by identification. We cannot stand and think that we are the best. We have to identify that globally men have abandoned the Lord. We have to accept that globally people have abandoned the covenants and the ways of Jehovah. And we have to accept that sometimes plagues and sword and things begin to happen so that the consciousness of man can be open. I was just going through the statistics and I came through a statistic that amazed me. And it said that globally we are committing 45 million abortions globally. So every year there are many people who die more than the number of people who are dying because of corona. 45 million, that's the population of Kenya. Uh, we have seen in the parts of Europe and other areas where there were great revivals, churches being closed down, and opening of clubs and bars where godlessness has ruled. Could this plague be a consciousness recognition so that men can understand that systems can fail, but there is a system that will never fail. Hallelujah. May we cry that the Lord of justice and the Lord of mercy, may we identify with the sins of the world, that indeed the Holy Ghost may begin to move and convict men. Because for me, I think Corona is not the issue. The bigger issue should be what will happen to you after the trumpet sound or after this life. Amen. We can get a cure for Corona. That's not a big issue. But people are still dying in sin. People are still. If we are voting for 5 million, if our guns are ready to kill and shoot, that means globally we are losing more men through sinful lifestyle more than the men we are losing through one disease. Hallelujah. 
So let's just identify and begin to identify. Let's look at seven and then we just pray. We have acted very corruptedly against you and have not kept the commandments, the statutes, nor the ordinances which you have commanded your servant Moses. So we are just identifying and saying, Lord, we have failed. We have failed. We have not kept the standard. We have not kept the mark. We have failed. We know, even as individuals, we know. Even as this nation, we know, we know, we, we cannot bury our heads in the sand. We know we, we are calling a God in crisis whom statutes and covenants we have not observed. In his righteous justice, he cannot be fooled. Chronicles 7.14. The scripture we quote a lot. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and heal their land. 15. Now my eyes will be open and my ears attentive to prayer made in this place. Uh -huh. For now I have chosen and sanctified this house that my name may be there. Maybe let's begin from 12. Because before he said, if my people, that is a possibility. Then the Lord appeared to Solomon by night and said to him, I have heard your prayer and I've chosen this place for myself as a house of sacrifice. This is one Solomon was dedicating the temple. Let's go to 13. This is what the Bible says, when I shut up heaven and there is no rain or command the locusts to devour the land or send pestilence among my people, then it gives a possibility, meaning that people can face all these things and not pray. I don't know. I think right now everyone is looking up to America, waiting for, um, wait, waiting for vaccine. But very few people are looking up to heaven, waiting for instructions. The science world may fail because anything that is triggered and anything that comes as a plague, it takes divine power to avert it. Are you getting me? And so, let's look at Hosea 2.21. Let's begin to see when the heavens are shut, what happens to humanity. Because we, we are going just to tell the Lord, it shall come to pass in that day that I will answer, says the Lord, I will answer the heavens. And they shall answer the earth. That tells me the business of God is answering the heavens. So when the heavens are shut, the earth automatically suffers. So, so in this scripture, we begin to see that there are people who God expects to call upon his name. But he's giving a possibility of if. Meaning that if they don't call upon Zion, then the heavens will stay shut. And then he says, I will answer and they shall answer the earth. What does it answer? The earth shall answer with grain. That is provision. With new wine. Revelations. And with oil mantles, they shall answer Jezreel. Let me tell you the truth. When the heavens are shut, even the power to heal the sick will not be there. When the heavens are shut, even revelation to understand what is happening globally will not be there. Every day we wake up waiting for presidential briefings globally. The Prime Minister of England, the President of America, the President of Kenya, and... The ministry. But how many of us are asking what is God saying? Because as believers, we need to ask ourselves, what is the news from heaven? But when the heavens are shut, we suffer. We don't have supply. Food is limited. When the heavens are shut, no revelation. We cannot pick the conversations of the spirit. When the heavens are shut, mantles cannot be released. I saw someone update on Facebook and said, where are the men of prayer? Where are the men who can heal corona? I said, this thing, you cannot react to it in a day. <laughs> it's a place where men have labored to cultivate virtue. So you can't just wake up and begin to say, we are going to heal this thing. And all you are doing is eating from January to December. There must be men that were laboring in the spirit for long to have the ability to release virtue. Hallelujah. I want us just to pray consistently with scripture. And let's look at Psalms 30 verse 5. 
Because this is our guiding scripture, Psalms 30 verse 5. And we are just, the Bible says, for his anger is but for a moment. His favor is for life. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Give me in NIV so that we may see what that favor means. NIV. Uh, I'm looking for the version that says, but his mercies last for a lifetime. Weeping may remain for a night, but rejoicing comes in the morning. Are we together? The fact that God is a God of justice, he's also a God of mercy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When the body of Christ assembles for prayer, anytime you approach, there, there are different dimensions of God. There is the Father. When God, when, when Cain and Abel offered, when God received the sacrifice of Abel, he received it as God in his sovereignty. When he was dealing with them, he dealt as God in sovereignty and also as a father. When God showed up to ask Cain, where is your brother? He never came as a father. He came as a judge. And that is why when the man responded, he responded as a careless son. And he said, am I my brother's keeper? What he did not know at that time, he was not dealing with a father. He was dealing with a judge. And the judge pulled the evidence and said, there is blood crying for justice. And judgment was released. But in that narration, he told him, sin is hanging at your door. If you pray, you will overcome. Hallelujah. And I believe we have an opportunity to approach him as a judge and plead for mercy. Are we together? When you approach a judge, number one, when you accept the, what you've done is wrong, the next thing is seek for mercy. And because his mercies are new every morning, his mercies endures forever. I want us just to cry for mercy. Let's just open our, our mouth and begin to pray. Father.